Hey everybody, what's up from Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics never go out of style. Is it still possible to start collecting in 2023, or is the barrier of entry too high for beginners? To answer this question, I think we need to take a look at the two ways the market has fundamentally changed in the last few years. First is competition. Now there's no doubt there are innumerably more people in the hobby now than ever before. Collectors, investors, players, flippers, even scammers. And with the media attention that Pokemon has recently garnered and its potential profitability, there's been massive waves of people flowing into the hobby. In fact, this is seen in almost every segment of the market, with even something like booster boxes or individual pack prices increasing dramatically. In fact, it was recently announced that Pokemon would be increasing the MSRP of individual packs from $3.99 up to $4.49, which is a 12.5% increase here in 2023. It's also worth noting that older boxes, even for modern cards like Evolving Skies or less desirable sets like Chilling Rain or Battle Styles, have increased pretty dramatically in the last few months. We can see this in individual single card prices as well. Slab cards have made massive gains since pre-2020, and although they've tapered off a bit, they're still substantially higher than what they once were. This is also seen with raw cards, whether they be vintage or modern, and you could look at something like the Moonbrion as simply one example. Even things like special promotional giveaways that are meant to be widely distributed, like the special delivery Charizard, have a history of using bot accounts and then being turned and burned with massive flipping to try to maximize profit. It's not just the cards either. If we take a look at card-related services like grading, grading prices are nothing like they once were. In fact, if we go back prior to 2020, the average price to grade a card for the regular service was about $8 through PSA. That price at one time was as high as $30, and although it's tapered down to about $19 a card, that's still more than double what those prices once were. So I think it's a fair statement to say that the price of everything has substantially increased, creating that barrier of entry that a lot of new collectors are seeing today. So once again, that begs the question, is it still possible to start collecting in 2023, or is the barrier of entry too high for beginners? To answer this question, allow me to introduce Pokemon DNA, a good friend of mine and a fellow Pokemon collector and YouTuber. A few weeks ago, he challenged me to make a video of how I would personally spend $100 if I were starting all over as a new and inexperienced collector in this current market. Now, $100 is not a lot of money in this hobby, especially if you're like me and you prefer, prefer vintage cards to modern cards. So I decided I'd need to establish some basic principles before getting too far ahead of myself. And for any of you inexperienced collectors out there watching this video, or collectors on a tight budget, I think these principles are pretty universal and may help some of you get started as well. So here they are, my three tips for collecting on a budget. First, set attainable goals. With limited funds, it's important to build a foundation of success, especially early on. Second, define your collection identity. A narrowed focus will make it easier to engage with the market and give your collection a sense of identity. Third, and finally, look for potential upside. Seeking cards with potential upside after grading can generate additional funds to expand your purchasing power. And I realize that not everyone is looking to flip their purchases, but the reality is that reselling extra copies of a card or graded copies of a card can potentially generate more funds that can then be used to buy more cards and continuously grow a collection. It's a great strategy. So what would I collect in this hypothetical scenario? With just $100 in limited experience as a collector? Personally, I'd start with something like this. These are the W Stamped Wizards of the Coast promo cards, a set of just seven cards released between the fall of 1999 and the spring of 2001. Now, I realize none of these cards are particularly rare or valuable, but they happen to meet the three principles I previously mentioned. They're attainable, they have identity, and they have upside. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's talk attainability. Now this is a really small set, especially by comparison to some of the modern sets and even some of the vintage sets over the years that could have 100 cards or potentially over 200 cards to completing just one set. Now this set is only seven cards, making it relatively easy to accomplish, which in my opinion is great for beginners just getting started. These cards are also highly affordable. 
With the exception of the Dark Charmeleon, which had a smaller and more unique distribution, most of these cards can be acquired for between $10 and $30 in near mint condition. And if we're operating on just $100 as a new collector, we could easily knock out some of these cards and perhaps even most of the set. Finally, these cards are widely available. In fact, with a little bit of engagement on eBay and some patience, a buyer could likely snag some of these at auction for prices below what I have them pictured for on screen. Not only is this a nice way to save some money, but it's also a great opportunity for new collectors to develop the experience and the research necessary while operating in a low risk environment. From a psychological standpoint, we could also talk about the affirmation that Winning Streaks provides. Now, as a teacher myself, many pedagogical books and resources out there emphasize starting small and building students' confidence or self-efficacy through a series of early successes. This idea, sometimes known as creating winning streaks, is something that I think is particularly important for beginning collectors. That's one of the primary reasons why I chose this particular set, that these cards are easily attainable, and as a collector gains that experience in the market, they can then easily apply these same types of skills and principles and upscale to higher value items with greater confidence. There's nothing more encouraging than making progress on a goal through the progression that comes naturally and through the education that comes along with it. And this is a relatively easy and low risk scenario to do just that. The second reason I chose this particular set is for its unique identity and history within the TCG. For those of you that are unaware, the W stamp promos date all the way back to the beginning in 1999 and 2000, where they were distributed primarily through Top Deck Magazine, which would often include a promo card or a booster pack within each issue. Similar to the stamped pre-release cards, the first movie promos, or even the E3 and Poke Tour Pikachus, these are some of the only gold stamp promo releases throughout the early era of Pokemon. Now, this is just personal preference, but I love the Wizards of the Coast era. And I was highly involved in collecting and running a league in those early years, so items like this have a certain nostalgic significance for me. It's also worth noting that not every card from this set was as widely available. A few of these cards had unique distributions outside Top Deck Magazine, the first of which was the Jungle Pikachu card that had a similar release in a 1999 issue of Duelist Magazine, while the Dark Arbok and Dark Charmeleon were only released internationally. In fact, the Dark Arbok was distributed through the Hong Kong Pokemon League in February of 2001, and the Dark Charmeleon was released as part of a craft partnership promotion in Australia. Again, none of these cards though are particularly rare or valuable, but the unique distribution history is just one of the many things I love about this set. Finally, let's talk about card diversity. This set features cards from six different Wizards of the Coast sets, Jungle, Fossil, Base Set 2, Team Rocket, Gym Heroes, and Gym Challenge. And although none of them are hollows, I think it's a great eclectic mix of Pokemon. For one, you get Pikachu, the face of the franchise, and the only card that's in first edition in this set. You get War Turtle, one of my personal favorite uncommons and a card that was widely used in deck building at the time. A Kabuto, which I think is a great representation of the fossil set. Dark Charmeleon, which is arguably the best non-hollow artwork in all of Wizards of the Coast. And Dark Arbok, Misty Psyduck, and Brock's Vulpix all give a nod to the anime by acknowledging several of the important side characters and their Pokemon. Again, it's a really cool mix in my opinion. Finally, I chose this set for its potential upside in mint condition. Now it's no secret that grading cards can significantly increase their value, and that's true for just about anything, as long as it's in mint condition, or better yet, gem mint condition. To demonstrate this, I looked up recent comps for the W stamp Pikachu, in my research, I was able to find a raw copy that sold for just over $20, a PSA 9 copy that sold for $60, and a PSA 10 copy that sold for $470. Although I can't confirm that each of these sales was legitimate, all three sales are consistent with recently sold prices and were sold in the last two weeks. Obviously, the upside potential for a PSA 10 is pretty significant here about 23 times the price of a raw copy. And even though I'm more of a collector than a reseller, that's one of the things I find most exhilarating as a collector is finding a minty raw card 
and then getting it graded for my collection. Now, I have to emphasize that the overwhelming majority of rock cards on the market are not in mint condition, and the few that will likely be will also be significantly more expensive than the $20 card shown here. And even if a card is mint, there's no guarantee of a PSA 10, or even a PSA 9 for that matter. And even a sub subtle defect like centering or a print line can potentially drop the card down to a PSA 8 or even lower. Still, the upside potential for a particular card is something I always like to consider before deciding what specifically to shop for. Looking at some of the other cards in the set, recently an entire W stamp promo set in PSA 10 condition was auctioned off on eBay. Now each of these cards had its own individual listing, with those listings closing at roughly the same time. Again, I can't confirm if each of these transactions went through, or if there was any shilling or any items left unpaid, but I still find the data fascinating. None of these cards crossed $650, with the lowest going for just $62, which was Brock's Vulpix. When taken collectively though, this entire set was $2,254.76, with the average price being about $322. Again, I realize that many collectors out there aren't concerned with prices or looking to flip their purchases for a profit, but considering that many of these cards are between $10 and $30 raw in near mint condition, that's a strong potential for appreciation if you can find just the right card. So again, is it possible to start collecting in 2023 or is the barrier of entry too high for beginners? There's no doubt that collecting is more difficult now than it has traditionally been in the past. Due to the massive influence of consumer competition and the inaccessibility driven by product shortages and higher valuations, it is a challenge. I certainly don't wanna downplay the difficulty and frustration that many collectors have experienced. However, I do think it's still possible. Even on a tight budget, by setting attainable goals, defining your collection identity, and looking for potential upside, it is possible to build a collection and eventually scale up with more time and experience. And that's the biggest takeaway for this video, that collecting is meant to be a process, a journey, not just an outcome. It takes time, knowledge, experience, and occasionally a bit of luck. But that's the fun of collecting. We're not just growing our collections, we're growing ourselves by learning new information, developing new skills, and also experiencing new milestones along the way. If you're a collector, I encourage you to not get discouraged. The hobby grows stronger and more vibrant with every collector here, and you're all welcome to be a part of it. Anyway guys, let me know down in the comments below how you would spend $100 if you were just starting out as a collector in this current market. I look forward to seeing your takes and your perspectives on this challenge. That's gonna wrap it up for this one, everyone. I'm Pokemon Classics reminding you that the classics never go out of style. Stay well, everyone, and don't forget to enjoy collecting. Bye, everybody.